How are you doing? Your new place. I am coming to you from scenic New Jersey. We got some boxes of shit we haven't really unpacked yet. And I, oh, this is Miracle. I just woke her up just a second, so she might be a little grumpy. Look what, at the camera. What the? Oh. oh, I'm not looking at the camera. Fuck you. Hi, baby. Say hello. She can't hear you. I know. She can't hear me. You're trying to tell her things and she can't hear you. Hi. I talk to her all day anyway. Does she know sign language? She's like, what am I doing? What I, what, I was what sleeping. Is, what what am I doing? I don't understand. A miracle is a sweetie. She's a special kitty. She's actually deaf, but that's okay. She's, she's deaf. That just means when she tries to talk to you, she's very loud. She's very loud. She just walks around the house like... Rawr, rawr, rawr. And the best she thing is... She, a lot. She can't hear you in... She can't hear you impersonating her. No. She sneezes in your face an awful lot. <laughs> well, maybe she, and she snores. Well, maybe she's just allergic to you. I actually think Bridget was allergic to me. Because my sister came in my room one day and Bridget's like scratching at her ears. And my sister was like, yeah, she never does that anywhere else in the house. I was like, oh my God, the cat's allergic to me. You are you are the person who cats are allergic to. Right? How ironic is that? Well, and now, and the great thing about being in your own place now, you can be as loud as the hell you want. So. I could be super loud. I was trying to find disembodied orgasm hippo, but... <laughs> I'm not sure what box he's in. Oh. So, what I do have. Hang on, please oh, hold. Shit. Uh oh, my lovely assistant is gonna bring me this thing. Ah, oh, fuck's sake! like what just happened to me why is it happening i'm leaving you no no the cat yeah <laughs> i'm with the cat i'm gonna go hang out with daddy i'm with the fucking cat uh we we bought her a golf course so i got cat hair in my mouth <laughs> every like late afternoon a, a family of like five deer walks by our back windows and one day the cat caught a hold of them and just like yelled and ran upstairs like the devil was chasing her but she... like, there's things outside <laughs> the yeah. there's these things they're scary <laughs> so you know it's been a fun experience there we go finally got it which that, that's sort of the anti-cat response they would normally i'm gonna eat that she's like no Yes, but she's only six pounds and she's deaf. She's not exactly an apex predator. Eh. Well, shall we get to the nonsense this week? Let's do the nonsense. Each week, Catherine and the Radio Dead Air audience go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And Tara. Just in honor of the fact that you are now in New Jersey, we're starting with a New Jersey story. Oh dear. Yes. Um, Look, I just moved into town. I have to earn money somehow. Oh God. Your segues are magical. The power of segway strikes again. Bus aid stole lunch money, food, from preschoolers. Oh! Yeah, okay, I would never do that. All right, yeah, they are asking. Yeah, I chopped off more of my hair. I didn't really mean to chop off this much more of my hair, but, you know, shit happens. I think it's not going to grow back, yeah. Millville, New Jersey, school bus aide has been charged with stealing lunch money and bagged lunches from preschoolers in New Jersey. Police in Millville say a 33-year-old Rosa Rios was caught on surveillance camera rummaging through students' backpacks. She's accused of stealing money and food from the 3 to 5-year-old she was supervising in January and February. 
Jesus, fuck. Authorities first reviewed the footage because the bus driver complained that someone had stolen $400 from her. Rios is also in an investigation for that theft. Shepard Bus Company says Rios no longer works at the firm. She had been employed there for about seven years. So in theory, an entire preschooler's career, an entire time in preschool, three to five years, scores of them from were getting rough. Special kind of asshole to steal money and food from preschoolers. Three years old. That's toddler. You're stealing money from toddlers. You're stealing food. Literally taking food. Out of children's out mouths. Of mouths. So, what she... So, it's in essence, from a time... Uh, these kids are going to remember, for some reason, they never had lunch when they were in preschool. And they're not going to be quite sure why. This is, this is like later years, psychiatrist. Kids are going to be on the fucking something, couch. Something to their parents. Mommy, my lunch keeps disappearing on the bus. Well, you know how parents are sometimes. Mo Mommy, my lunch keeps disappearing on the bus. Yes, it does, dear. Sure. Yes. Because they don't always believe their kids when they say stuff that doesn't seem... Who would... I can understand. Who would yeah. steal? Who would do that? Who's that big of an asshole? They'd actually think, well, who would steal from a preschool or a, that that oh, can't that's jingling. Oh, okay. Who would do that? that? O'Doyle rules! O'Doyle rules! Sorry. <laughs> Oh. Person, and you should feel bad, lady. Welcome to New Jersey. Little kids with no lunch. Welcome. Welcome to New Jersey. Let's move elsewhere. And oh, God. Okay. This is one of those things that happens, not just in this area, but in many areas, but specifically in this area, it happens a lot. People get elected to national office. And suddenly have no fucking idea what they are talking about. Which is bad enough, but they get put on committees where they're supposed to know what they're talking about and they don't. And I'm not just talking like little mistaking of facts. I'm talking pretty big stuff. I'm on the science committee and climate change isn't real. This is way worse. Jesus wrote a dinosaur. This is way worse. Lawmaker asks if swallowed camera oh, can be used for gynecological exam. Boise, Idaho. An Idaho lawmaker received a brief lesson on female anatomy after asking if a woman can swallow a small camera for doctors to conduct a remote Gynecological exam. Now, as I'm saying these words, some of you at home are going, why wouldn't that work? And I'm sad for you. They had to do this on Orange is the New Black. They had to explain to the woman in the prison that you don't pee out of your vagina. That they're separate entirely. And everyone on the show was like, no. No, really? And Transgender woman was the one that had to explain it to them. And they were all like, what? Oh, oh, and Maybe if we had better sex education in schools. Maybe. Although that said, I went to fucking public school and I was taught in school that my digestive tract and my re reproductive organs were totally separate. I was never under the impression that they were the same. So I don't know what the fuck is wrong with this guy. Maybe Idaho public schools are not as good. The question Monday from Republican uh, State Representative Vito Barbieri came as the House State Affairs Committee heard nearly three hours of testimony, a bill that would ban doctors from prescribing abortion-inducing medication through telemedicine. 
Dr. Julie Madsen was testifying in opposition to the bill when Barberi asked her the question. Madsen replied that would be impossible to swallow pills, but I'd end up in the vagina. No, we've seen things end up in the vagina on this show in very different ways, but never by swallowing them. No. And if that is the case, see a doctor immediately. Something has gone very wrong. Very wrong. You swallow something and it comes out your vagina. <laughs> you, you should be on House. That's I an just, episode of House. Yeah. I just... I just don't even know where to start with all the things that are probably wrong with you. And science will want to study you. And, and people at home, if you don't understand why this is wrong, it's one of two reasons. One of those being you're way too young to be watching this show. Where the fuck are your parents? And you should be in bed. Yes. Or if you're watching this recorded later, you shouldn't be watching this. No. Go watch Phineas and Ferb. And the other reason is read a book occasionally. Just do, do you even read, bro? Just, come on. But no. The, this, the, this is a person who is in public office. Yes, they are in charge of making laws which determine the eventual health care of women, he does not understand. How does he think he digests food without a vagina? <laughs> Since clearly that's a vital part of the digestive process. Is he thinking, you know what? If I swallow this pill, I shoot it up my dick like a machine gun. Because that's how that works. See, and that's the kind of, this, this is why I can't be in public office. Because I'm the kind of asshole that would be like... Well, yeah, and because of your vagina, you could do this, too, and just freak them the fuck out. I don't have a vagina. Well, clearly you do. How to digest things without a vagina? I'm <laughs> home with a total guys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she tried to, like, herd the cat back over here, and she was like, no, fuck you. I'm done for the night. He was like, no, go over there and be cute on camera. And she was like, no. Be I'll famous. See. Be famous, Kitty. Be also, famous. Our upstairs is much, much, much warmer than our downstairs. So she doesn't like to come downstairs much because it's a lot warmer up there. Speaking of very cold places. Tor wow. I'm yeah. on a roll with the yeah. same way. Toronto. And I, I don't understand what the hell was behind this thinking here. Have you heard the term man cave before? Yes. Yeah, it normally refers to a room in a house which is filled with, like, you know, you got your billiard table and your Xbox and, you know, it's a, and a little beer fridge and shit. You know, just, just dedicated to all things boyish. Well. Just dicks hanging off the walls. Yeah. So, someone took this a, a bit too... Literally, in Toronto. Toronto tunnel dug by two men as man cave. Two men in their 20s dug the bunker-like tunnel found in North Toronto as a, quote, man cave to hang out in, police say. The tunnel, which was discovered in January but first reported by the CBC News last week, was dug near York University's Keele campus at the Rexall Center, a major tennis vet venue that's set to host part of the summer's Pan Am Games, as well as the high-profile Rogers Cup tournament. It was simply two guys who wa just wanted to dig a cave, said Toronto Police spokesman Victor Kwong. Quote, that really is all our investigations led to. They wanted to dig a cave to hang out. CNBC News has learned pictures released by Toronto Police Investigation helped solve the mystery the tunnel near New York, near York University. The man who owned some of the equipment, which was found in the tunnel, saw it on television and called police. He said he had loaned it to an employee, construction worker who underpins homes. Uh, the tunnel, which was 10.1 meters long, that's about 30 yards, 
Uh, 1.93 meters high. That's about uh, six feet high and 86.4 centimeters wide. I'm not entirely sure how wide that is. Has been filled in. Investigators believe man began the work on the tunnel last September. So these guys were out in the freezing ass winter in Toronto digging a hole in the ground to hang out in. Why? Presumably you have a home to hang out in that has heat and TV and an Xbox and porn and food and... I'm... How do they think a man cave had to be a literal? <laughs> well, it's it's oh, hey, Dave, it's called a cave. It's in the name. It's it. It's cave. in. The, it's in the name, man. Yo, you know, we totally have to make a cave because it's got to be a cave. You go over to Tim Hortons and uh, I see called a man room. <laughs> Duh. No, that's, that's not how that works. You can just have a room. This seems like if, way too much if effort. Call the bachelor, you can just have your whole place. This seems like way too bachelor. Probably your whole place is a man cave. This this seems like way too much effort just to goof off. This seems like some dudes that need to take some more electives. <laughs> that is a big ass hole. They got some time on their hands that needs to be better spent. <clears throat> Doesn't digging a giant hole stop being fun when you're like ten? Yeah, kind of. And you know, yeah, that's fun. Let's see if we can dig all the way to China. I think about it. And I, then after about an hour, you're like, this blows. Why am I doing this? I think I, the deepest I ever got was like two feet before I realized this is. An, and then you know what I did? I went, I turned the hose on, I filled it with water. And it was mud. And that was more fun. Yeah, at some point it occurs to you that you're doing manual labor for fun and you stop. <laughs> this is. And God, how I, I I stopped playing Dungeons and Dragons after one time because I realized I was doing math for recreation, and I was like, "Fuck this noise! I don't even like doing math when they make me." You would think at some point they realize we're in, we're in Toronto, in a hole in the hole. ground in winter. It doesn't seem like a good place to be. No. Especially, that doesn't seem especially desirable. This is, I mean, you know, if this was like some Shawshank Redemption shit, I could understand. Andy, right, if they were trying to get out of somewhere. Andy Dufresne they dug a hard. hole in the ground for no fucking reason. And what's weird me out is, have you read the book or seen the movie The Lovely Bones? No. That's... It's no spoiler to say that the main character dies because it's the first thing that happens in the book is she tells you she's dead. The way she dies is this totally creepy dude digs a cave like this and kills her in it and then fills it in. Yeah, so this is probably freaking some people right the fuck out. Yeah. Uh... Like he even decorates it as, a, as like a little hangout and says he made it for all the local kids to hang out and then he fucking kills her in it. So any dude that digs a hole in the ground is like, oh, I made it to hang out. I'd be like, no, I read that book. No. <laughs> Fuck you. Let's move someplace a little bit warmer. Um, you know. <laughs> I moved in an ice storm yesterday, by the way. We had an awesome raging ice storm. Winter Storm Sparta. Did you know it was called that? It earned it. Because it was spitting ice from the sky while we were moving shit. It was less than awesome. I'll leave you guys to make your own this is Sparta jokes. I'm kind of done with that. That was a few years ago. And I, I kicked Dan down into a pit. It's yeah. a good time. This hole he dug in the backyard, actually. I, I have seen... Uh, most little stores have these specialty you know, little run like supermarkets and whatnot. Like They're like Chinese or Korean or or um, Pakistani, I've seen one of those. Especially foods, like, you know, people come here from other countries and they make 
they're you know they're like you know what no one sells the shit i eat here i'll sell the shit i eat here and you know it they make money however some of the things are probably not sold here for a really good reason la supermarket sells frozen raccoons by the bag California woman called health authorities complained about a Chinese food market after finding an item she didn't approve of in their store. Metro supermarket was selling raccoon meat. It's been sold for years, and now it's off the shelves while officials investigate. Store employees declined to go on camera, but did show us the whole raccoon sold in a bag for $10 a pound, which they say is a delicacy in China. But not everyone's eager to try it. Christine Dow posted cell phone video on social media saying she was horrified to find several of the bagged raccoons. Now, we're not talking gutted, skinned, boned raccoons. <laughs> These were whole bodies. Like fucking rocket in a bag. Yes. It might be a delicacy overseas. Here we just call it the home rabies hobby kit. Yeah, you just... You can't go out and kill something and then just put it in your store. No. That's a problem. That's a really good way to get a number of interesting diseases. For Yeah. It's, you know, I understand they have their own, some countries eat things we don't, we eat things other countries don't. It's, it's all relative. However, and you know what? If you were selling raccoon that had been, you know, grown and you understood it did not have the rabies and, you know, you raised them for slaughter and whatnot, okay, but just put them in a bag and shove it in the freezer. We found this on the side of the highway, $9.99. No! I used to know, I used to work with a woman whose husband would pull over and pick up roadkill and use it to make Native American art. Yeah. Like he used the pelts and everything of roadkill and their whole house was decorated with it. And you're like, oh, I really like that pelt up there. He's like, yeah, I found that on the side of I-84. And you're like, oh, that's, that's cool. Yeah. And I'm like, you basically have, like, fleas and all kinds of viral plague hanging around your house as decoration. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah, no, I'd love, I'd love another glass of wine. I mean, most, most of the, uh, the, when you put meat in stores, they, they have an FDA process and they, they can verify that, you know, it's, it's, it's not been... Now, I knew they, they they also have organic grown and whatnot, but even that has a little bit of regulation to look into it, you know, to keep the salmonella and other shit out of it. However, just killing a thing and putting it in a bag and selling it. We have problems with that. We have laws. Yeah. Regard to that sort of thing. Don't Don't do that. Okay, I know he literally didn't have viruses hanging on his walls, you guys. For God's if, sake. Well, how would he put the thumbtacks in them? They're, they're too... You can't really... Virus, you can't live without a living host. I know. I'm just saying it's gross to hang roadkill on your walls. That's what I'm saying. So... You know... <sighs> I'm tr last week we had the Krispy Kreme Donut Club, the KKK yeah. incident, and that was admittedly stupid, but accidental. Right. You don't know how custom what customs are in other countries or everything, but you know Google is a great resource. Yeah, and this is also this is from Calgary. That that's that's Canada. That's another country. A bit closer to us than England, I want to point out. Um, also ruled by the Queen. This one not is... ruled, but they are under the guise of... Not guise. What's the word? They're under the purview of the Queen. That was an accident 
that was stupid. This, on the other hand, is stupidity claiming to be an accident. Calgary students disciplined after wearing apparent KKK robes. Two Calgary high school students who showed up at a party wearing what appeared to be Ku Klux Klan robes sparked outrage on social media, disciplined by school administrators after the negative reaction spilled into school halls. The theme of the weekend party was to dress in white so their clothes would glow under black lights. Two St. Francis High School students wore white robes and hoods. Stop that. Stop that. Shush. Yes. Sorry. In the same style. A very aggressive truck ad started playing. Wore white robes and hoods in the same style as a supremacist, supremacist group KKK. Suppose the cops costume quickly spread on Twitter, among other social media platforms, which with suggestions, the outfit was racist. Police say the uproar over the costumes was based on a misunderstanding and that the two students had no intention to appear racist. There's no reference to the KKK or any extremist view. It was just cover ourselves, head to toe in white garments, the theme of the party. No. Dwayne Lepchuk. No. 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 Fuck you. No. No. We didn't mean to be racist. We just wanted to put these pillowcases on our heads at such an angle. Yeah, because you could have just done a Charlie Brown. Yeah. No, bitch. With the sheet and the eye holes cut out. Not the long, pointy fucking hood. It's a very specifically shaped... Mm-hmm. Like, you can throw a pillowcase on your head straight, and it's not going to look like that. No, you look like Jason in Nightmare in, uh, fr- uh, Friday 13th Part 2. I think I only ever saw the first one. He wasn't in that one. I know. Yeah. It was his mom. This is mom. But... That's how Drew Barrymore died in Scream. Spoiler alert. But this is just... No. <laughs> Oh, there she is. Yeah. Can you hear it? <laughs> yeah, it. This is a, no. This is not what they mean by the white party. If you want to show up on the black light, there are. Why didn't you just wear white clothes? Yeah. Have you no t-shirts, man? White t-shirt really would have done the trick. That's like two bucks. You can get like a dozen of them at Walmart. I know you have Walmart in Canada. It's everywhere. But it's just... Yeah, this this, this not cool. Now that said, hmm. does Canada have... And this I don't know, and forgive me for not knowing. Does Canada have a comparable law to our first amendment i think because if so like yeah they're dicks but for the school to discipline them i mean unless you're calling it hate speech which it kind of is but if you don't have a hate speech rule well yeah schools can discipline you for whatever the fuck they want yeah i know they don't have to follow the law they can just say fuck you we yeah, do what we true. want. Schools can pretty much, they're little fiefdoms. And you know, in this case, I'd say you're making us look like assholes. That's a pretty good reason. Pretty good reason. True. I mean, not that I'm arguing that they were right, but it's the same way I feel about the Westboro Baptist Church. Like, yeah, I would love for them to stop doing what they're doing. But they have a right to do what they're doing. And we have a right to mock them. Right. Like, nobody likes them, but that doesn't mean they don't have a right to be assholes. You do. Which, you know, sucks, but... However, there are limits on assholedom. And our last story is... Oh, the asshole. This... This... Sometimes, when you're in a relationship, you just don't want to have sex. 
It happens for whatever reason. Go on. And you have the right to tell your partner. <laughs> you have the right to tell your partner, I'd rather not. At any time. That's how that works. Yes. You do not, however, have the right to do this. Oh, dear. Man and I have sex. Bird's house. How does that solve the problem? <laughs> Although we were just saying fire fixes everything. Well, not in this case. A Kygera D. Maybe uh, not everything. I'm going to have so much trouble saying every single word in here. I am sorry. A guy at the Oro man burned his house down after he was denied. Yeah. Authorities are now hunting Aminodin Makadang. Makadag? 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 Okay. For arson and frustrated murder charges after he attempted to kill his partner and burned their house. What's frustrated murder? Or, well, he didn't actually do it. Court has no. it. What's what's a frustrated murder I charge? Don't know. I don't know, actually. Report has it. Macadag, twenty eight, had a fight with his partner who was five months pregnant when she refused when he refused to get rice from his grandmother. Later, she denied him of lovemaking, and that made him extremely angry. The woman fled from her house. She saw Macadag with knife in hand. She became more afraid when he threatened to burn their house, so she left the area immediately. Turned out that he wasn't lying. She came home at about 1 a.m. and saw their house in ashes. Macadag, nowhere to be found. So. Instead of just not having sex when you could have just, well, rubbed one out and called it a night. Not having sex. Now you don't have a house! Yes, now, now you have nowhere to have sex even if your girlfriend did want to. And she probably really fucking does it now. No! See, women, I've come to find, unless you're in very set circumstances with pre-established rules way ahead of time, don't like it when you come at them with a knife! No, no. That's no. not a turn-on! Mm-mm. Maybe for some not folks, but you're... I'm not really a fan of that. Yeah, you normally have a safe word. <laughs> You know what else doesn't turn women on? Coming home and having the house gone. No! They don't like that! That that doesn't do it for us. No either. woman and has it come make us any more likely to do what you want. No woman has ever come home to a pile of ashes and gone, fuck me now. No. Has any woman ever come home to a pile of ashes and been like, you know what? I really see your point of view. I'm sorry. No. It Unless the argument under question was, no, honey, we really need to fix the dryer. I think it's going to burn the house down. Yeah. If that, that were to happen, I'd be, you know what? You you called that one. I'm very sorry. She had a point. Not this time. That's pretty much the only case this, where she's going to come around to your way of thinking. This is not how you win an argument. I mean, I think it's clear this guy was some level of abusive asshole. Well, now he's and in, she's probably better off if he's behind bars in yeah, general. He's in because abuse. you're going to come at your pregnant girlfriend with a knife for any reason, go fuck yourself. With a rusty chainsaw in the ear. Was there a safe word? No. Chainsaw, ear, fuck yourself. We don't judge, but we do judge when you're an asshole. There's some differences. We do not respect that life choice. <laughs> Okay, Malice says, I don't know, Nash, she may have come home to see that and went, well, fuck me. <laughs> That's true. That could happen. Context is important. Yeah. Context is, in fact, important in that circumstance. Tone. I feel like tone is very important. Yeah. Because there's a big difference between, well, fuck me, and well, fuck me. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like, what, now? Now? No. Inflection. No. I think, well, I guess the first thing we learned tonight is there are many ways to your partner's heart and arson generally not one of them. Not Certainly not the way to her pants. 
We've learned that a claim of ignorance is no excuse for stupidity. No, I think that's actually... I'm stupid because I'm ignorant? I think that tracks, actually. Yeah, but accident. This is no, there's no way that's an no. accident. I mean, that brings a whole new that Brad Paisley song "Accidental Racist" to a whole new level. But no, this was not an accident. You fucking tool bags. Yeah, there are many things America is famous for. The KKK is one of them, and if we don't like it. You shouldn't either. No, nobody should like the KKK. We've learned that. Sampling ethnic food is fine and often very fun. However, there are rules. You do want food that you know is not going to kill you. Yes. And generally, yes. if I'm going to a store to procure food, I like food that's already been deferred and all of that stuff. I don't. I don't want to have to cut its head off myself. I'm not a big now, fan. Of there are butcher shops that sell all manner of animals with the heads on. So I know some people, me personally, I don't want to have to decapitate my food. I don't like eating things with a face. It's... Well, not the face currently. Like, I'm not a vegetarian, so. Get, get rid of the face, then we'll talk. I don't want to look it in the eye while I'm eating it. You know, there was a thing for a while where you could eat live lobster while it was still alive that was a trend for a while like they would just paralyze it and you could eat it while it was still alive and i'm like is that like a serial killer training course why would you want to seriously that? that's fucking hannibal i don't know it's not enough that i'm gonna eat this animal i want to watch it fucking suffer mm -hmm. no i don't claim any moral superiority because i do eat meat but I don't walk up to a cow and stab it and take a like that. There's there's a line, man. But that was a thing for a while. It was a trend among the foodie elite. Uh, People are fucked up. We've learned that you can take things too literally, such as man cave. Yes. And if it's more work than fun, maybe you should just have the fun. Yes. Some things are worth the hard work, to, you know, it's a payoff, whatnot, but if it's just sitting around drinking beer, there are much easier, much more satisfying, way, satisfying much ways. Less labor intensive places to sit around and drink beer. Yes. Like everywhere. We've learned <laughs> we've learned that the people in charge of making laws are frightening in their ignorance. Yeah. And also if you didn't already know, we have learned the vagina is not connected to the stomach. In no way connected to your stomach. It's not. At no point. No, it's no, there is no intersection. There's, it's, you now, can't get know, there from here. A man's heart is connected to his stomach. That's only true in men. Yes. Look it and up. Doesn't involve the reproductive tract there either. And finally, we've learned, yes, there is someone out there willing to take candy from a baby, or in this case, money from toddlers. And their food. And their food. <laughs> They're like parents, two years in, wondering why Johnny hasn't gained any weight in the last two years. I'm trying to picture what my sister, my sister would have literally murdered people, I think. If she found out someone was stealing my nephew's lunch from school, I think there would be bodies. You don't fuck with a mama bear. They take that shit serious. 